arrhythmias are uh, abnormal electrical activity in the heart and can cause sudden cardiac death. Uh, often it's lethal. So trying to identify uh, the pathways that contribute to cardiac death is uh, a, a critical focus of cardiovascular study. One of the challenges is that there are many different pathways that uh, conspire to lead to cardiac arrest due to ventricular arrhythmias. And so one thing that we've done is focused on a specific type of arrhythmia mechanism that is due to prolongation of a measure on the electrocardiogram called the QT interval. QT interval prolongation is uh, a side effect of about 80 marketed drugs. There are uh, inherited syndromes in which rare mutations have strong effects on QT interval and cause congenital long QT syndrome characterized by cardiac arrest uh, in the setting of intense stress. And so we've been interested in studying populations for uh, QT interval uh, genetic variation as a, as a general contributor and as a way to get a hook into novel biology that we haven't recognized as a contributor to QT interval prolongation and arrhythmias. So we uh, had the, I had the good fortune to participate in uh, genome-wide association studies, uh, kind of at their outset and in some smaller, what we thought at the time were large studies. Uh, we uh, had some su success in identifying novel genes. We basically tried to collaborate with anybody we could find um, who had appropriate uh, uh, studies uh, in which individuals had both electrocardiograms and genome-wide genotyping, um, and then through studying common genetic variants across the genome uh, and aggregating data from 100,000 people, uh, we were able to identify 35 chromosomal regions that have 68 independent genetic variants that contribute to QT interval variation. This is such a wonderful example of collaboration, um, not only between labs that are broadly interested in genetics, but also um, between labs that have very different expertise, technical ex expertise. Um, so the way this got started was I did my PhD in Mark Daly's lab and at the time was studying how we can use knowledge of how proteins physically interact in cells to interpret genes coming out of genome-wide association studies. And we were building some methods and, Ka and uh, I was working with Casper Lodge, who um, is a senior author on this paper at the time. And uh, I was approached by Paul DeBacher and Chris Newton-Shea to see whether we could use some of the methods we were developing to help them interpret their meta-analysis. The major findings were that we identify specific components and test them in model organisms uh, that are involved in, in cardiac repolarization and controlling the heartbeat in humans. And it was surprising that we saw a cluster of physically interacting calcium-regulating proteins. Uh, we actually saw three proteins that uh, one of them was a calcium channel and two others were, were reg regulators of this channel uh, and that was unexpected because usually potassium flux is, is, is thought and, and known to be involved in cardiac repolarization events so the fact that calcium also seems to play a role was an unexpected discovery that we were quite uh, intrigued by. That's one of the ways that our method is, is novel is that you know oftentimes we think of Mendelian disease, the rare variation that causes severe phenotypes, as something that's separate from common variation. And that's variation that leads to little bits of risk for disease, but not, it's not deterministic of dis disease. But I think we're learning more and more that these things are just part of the same spectrum for some phenotypes. And in this case, that it, it really looks like that. And, and this is one of the first times that um, we've taken a Mendelian disease, a severe phenotype, long QT syndrome, where individuals are born with a congenital abnormality. Um, and seeing how that connects mechanistically to a common trait like QT interval in the general population. And they seem to intertwine significantly in the cell, meaning that the proteins causal of both significantly connect to each other. Um, and so the, the rare variants causing the severe disease are indeed related to the common variants, and we can learn from the rare variants in, in order to interpret the common variants. We definitely feel that this is a general model for how you could integrate common and rare genetic variation and use quantitative interaction proteomics uh, carried out in the right and the specific tissue of interest to really augment the genetic data. The, the two papers in parallel have uh, a different um, 
have, have had different lives and a different origin, but they actually converged and we were able to make connections uh, here at the Broad because it's such a diverse and rich uh, community. So even though the proteomic experiments were done in Copenhagen, uh, a, a postdoc who was involved in the project actually had work here at the Broad and in Copenhagen, as does uh, Cosper. So it's kind of a very nice example of the collaborations that can arise from having so many people together from different backgrounds.